Welcome back everyone. We get to talk about another iPad this time around and it's actually the iPad Pro 10.5 inch. Now this was actually I think one of the most important iPads that Apple has ever made and this actually brought a lot of firsts I guess from Apple. This was the first iPad, you know we'll get into it in a second, but this is definitely one of my favorite iPads of all time. It looks very good, it still performs really well, and honestly if you need to go and pick up an iPad and move on with your life, this is not a bad option. However, do keep in mind that this may not be the most, you know, longest lasting iPad, you know, forever now. So you may be better off buying something that's a little bit more current, but but this iPad is still pretty decent in so many different ways. Now, if you want to pick this iPad up or any other iPads that I recommend this year, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now, on the front of this iPad, we actually did have a 10.5 inch IPS panel. And although the panel, you know, the design of this thing looks pretty much the same like as the older iPads, this actually was a little bit different because we had, we had slimmer sides basically on the bezels, which looked really cool. And we also had a little bit of a better front facing, you know, display because we did have 120 hertz on it which was incredible we had pro motion on this specific ipad which was really cool and this was actually one of the first ipads to bring 120 hertz and one of the first products from apple to bring 120 hertz that was a really cool feature and this was back in 2017 you know almost five years ago we just got it recently on our iphones so it's weird that we just got this now although we've been having it on our ipads for so many years now this was also the last ipad pro to have a home button or one of the last ipad pros we eventually got the iPad Pro third generation in 2018, which was technically the iPad Pro first generation because it was like a refresh without the home button or anything like that. I'm still a fan of those iPads. They look beautiful, but this one looks very, very good as well. Now we have the lightning port at the bottom with the headphone jack and this iPad actually did support Apple Pencil 1 support too, so you could go ahead and plug in an Apple Pencil 1 if you'd like, and uh, you know, I like Apple Pencil 2 a little bit better, but this was still a really cool thing that we had on this, you know, device, and again, I'm a fan of it for sure. We had pretty much, you know, still the curved size, not the flat size on this thing yet, but on the back, we did have this aluminum back, which still looks and feels very premium. This iPad still feels pretty much like the iPad Pros that we have nowadays, although this thing doesn't feel as premium because those things, you know, do have flat size, they have no home buttons or anything, so those do look a lot better, but this one still doesn't look old, it doesn't look super ugly or anything, and since Apple is still selling a lot of iPads that have home buttons, like the iPad 9th generation, they just stopped selling the iPad 8th generation that also had a Home button so there really isn't that big of a reason and they're still selling the iphone se2 that has a home button so just because it has a home button doesn't mean it's super outdated and i still think it looks you know pretty decent for sure now we do have that camera set up on this thing as well on the back we have a 12 megapixel single you know lens and on the front we have a 7 megapixel camera now this is what i'll pretty much tell you this camera is pretty much almost the same thing as like an iphone 6s type of camera so on the back we have you know the 12 megapixel lens we can shoot 4k videos at and this isn't really that bad of a camera to be honest but like i mentioned i don't know too many people who are like taking their ipad and filming a bunch of videos on it i think a majority of people are just using this ipad as other things as like a productivity device and different things like that i don't really think many people are buying this ipad specifically for the camera but it's not a bad camera having the ability of doing 4k at 30 or 1080p at 60 is more than enough for a lot of people and i still think the quality of this lens really isn't that bad you also have ois on it which is pretty decent on the front you do have that 7 megapixel standard lens and you can do 1080p videos on this thing too which i think is pretty decent however like i mentioned compared to phones nowadays we have literally 4k at 60 all across the board even on like a lot of budget phones if you consider the iphone 13 mini as more of a budget phone i mean we have 4k at 60 on that even the iphone 11 from 2019 has 4k at 60 on the front so i would definitely you know side probably not picking up this you know ipad for the camera it's not a bad option but the phone in your pocket can probably give you better quality photos and videos than this thing so in terms of the camera setup that pretty much covers it up now next up we do have the software and longevity of this ipad and this is where things start getting a little bit more complicated so this device if you don't know apple pretty much bases their long lasting ipads or you know how long a device lasts based on the you know chipset inside and with this ipad i mean we it does have the apple a10x fusion chip inside of it that is kind Kind of the same chipset as the iPhone 7. Now because this thing has that 10x chipset inside, we could probably see this thing maybe even lasting longer than an iPhone 7. Now you might be wondering why that's the case. Well, if you look at some other iPads that had an X chipset inside, like the iPad Air 2 that had that Apple 8 X chipset inside, same thing based off the iPhone 6, 
That thing, is, you know, got so many more updates than the iPhone 6. It's not even funny. That thing is still supported with software. And the iPhone 6 has been unsupported with software since I think 2019. So that iPad has been supported for a very long time. And this is where this iPad is a little bit more confusing because realistically, the iPhone 7 could end on iOS 16. And if this iPad is anything like the previous iPads with it having an X chipset, we can probably see this iPad lasting even longer than, you know, the iPhone 7, maybe even like two or three versions on top of it. The build quality of this thing, which is the same as before, but the 120 hertz panel, the speed of this thing and everything about it still is completely relevant. So I don't know what to make of that. Maybe it'll last just as long. I'm not 100% too sure, but I guess we'll see what happens in the future. So it's tough to say, but it's still supported with software now, and I'd still recommend picking it up for sure. Now, in terms of performance, this device has that Apple A10X Fusion chip inside of it with four gigabytes of RAM. And like I mentioned before, this is another really big asset of this specific iPad. I mean, you have a really, really good performing chipset inside, which is amazing, but you still have a lot of RAM. I mean, to give you some perspective, this iPad from 2017 has the same amount of RAM as the iPhone 13s that just came out. So although the iPhone 13s are faster and better in every single area, I mean, you're still lacking 120 hertz on the iPhone 13, and you're still lacking, you know, I, I mean, you're getting the same amount of RAM on both these two, which is so cool. So when it comes down to these things, what I pretty much look at is the speed and everything, and this is still a very, very good performance performing iPad. I think if you're somebody who's going to go ahead and pick up an iPad and pretty much move on with your life, this isn't a bad option when you consider the age of this iPad, the probable future of this thing, as well as how you know cheap this thing is now. I mean, it's not a thousand dollars like the newest iPad Pros. This thing has gone in down in value quite a bit. And although there's been a little bit of a spike in terms of, you know, the recent, you know, price increases with a lot of products, since a lot of them are being sold out because of the chip shortage, a lot of these older iPads are still maintaining their used prices from before. And that's still Still substantially cheaper than a lot of the latest iPads that just came out. And honestly, if you're somebody who just wants to go and buy an iPad Pro and you know you just want to use it for a couple of years and you don't plan on doing anything crazy with it, well, this isn't a bad option. But even if you're trying to do some more intensive things on it, you could probably get it done, like you know, light gaming and different things like that. I'm sure you could have a pretty decent experience with it, although I probably wouldn't recommend buying this thing if you're trying to do like super heavy intensive gaming or you're multitasking like crazy. But for basic professional type of you know tasks this isn't that bad of an option and i could totally use this as an everyday ipad if i needed to so in terms of performance that covers it up there and in terms of battery life this thing has a 8134 million power battery inside of it which is still a really big size battery to have on these types of things this thing isn't like the fastest most power hungry chipset of all time although you know it is a little bit older and the batteries probably have degraded since then it's still a decent size battery to have on this thing and i think it's definitely more of a pro it's definitely a pretty decent you know battery life to have on this thing and battery size than you know a con in my opinion so in terms of that that covers it up there too and to be honest i think the ipad pro 10.5 inch is still completely worth it in 2022 i think this is a beautiful ipad with so much capability i don't necessarily think it's perfect but i do think it's good enough for a lot of people and if you're somebody who just wants to go and ipad get an ipad and pretty much like move on with their life this isn't a bad option you know i would always recommend buying the latest ipads you can buy if you can go for the ipad pro third generation with the 11 inch and 12.9 inch models and go for it but if you can't this isn't a bad option and i would still recommend picking it up so in terms of that that covers it up there if you guys have any other questions or anything like that let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that would mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then